This is a simple quick start guide on how to start the fly-by-wire A380X from cold and dark to takeoff. Let's go. And welcome to the flight deck of the A380. Let's go ahead and get this thing started and in the air, starting with the batteries. So battery one, ES bat, bat two, and APU bat. Next, we'll turn on the external power in this order. External two, three, one, and four. You can hear everything powering up at this point. You can turn on your cockpit lighting if it's dark. That cockpit lighting will be down here on the right center pedestal. Integral lighting, main flood, and so on. Back up to the top, though, we'll go ahead and get the APU master on, which is right down here. APU master switch on and the APU start switch on. And once the APU is up, we'll get everything else powered. You can see everything else is slowly powering on. That flap is open, which means the APU is starting up. We can see our N1 rising. There it is, 99%, 100%, and APU is avail. If you look back up to the top, we'll now see a green lettering saying avail for APU available. We'll click on the APU bleed next, and we'll stick to the top here of the uh, uh, overhead, and we'll get the ADs, nav, nav, and nav. And then basically, you want to extinguish all of these white lights. And it's one way up here to the top called NSS data. We'll click on down first. And then we'll come down to the left side and you hit the ground recorder, which is actually currently in op and crew supply to off. And then you want to punch all of your fuel pumps on. Now, the way I normally personally do this is I don't turn my fuel pumps on until after I have actually loaded my fuel, but it doesn't necessarily matter in the sim. All right, all the fuel pumps are on and the white lights are extinguished. Let's continue to slide down here and we'll get our nav lights on. On the right side, we have our emergency lights up to the arm position and our smoking signs on and we'll turn on our seatbelt signs on as well next we'll go to the efb over on the left you can see right now is a black screen all you gotta do is tap on it to bring it to life it's gonna turn on doesn't take too long to load pretty nice and you can see actually already it's imported my fuel and payload click on the third icon here which is for ground services and here is where you can load your fuel and payload will go to the services tab first and here you can actually uh connect your ground power open up your cargo doors now these doors can only be opened if the aircraft is powered because if it's not it's not gonna be able to use the hydraulics and things like that you can also open up your doors connect jet bridges fuel trucks and etc and because i use gsx gsx can actually control those doors for me so i'll go ahead and hit request boarding, boarding and we'll select uh we'll go with uh, taiwan airport services on the fuel page, because we've imported our flight plan and information from SimBrief, it already has a predetermined number here. But if you want to change that, you can just move this left to right. You can also click in here to change that as well. I'm going to hit the cloud icon to sync that to my SimBrief right up there. We'll go ahead and attach the tug. That's fine. And nobody. And we'll hit the play icon here to actually instantly load our fuel. If you want that to be more realistic, you can click on the refuel time of fast or real. For payload, it is very similar here on the left you can see passengers plan 385 cargo and zero fuel weight and we'll hit the double arrows to begin boarding and you can see that's now populated our whole aircraft both on the main and upper decks and we will leave this page up because we're going to need it later let's go down to our mcdu so down here is very similar if you're used to using airbuses but i'll show you how to do it anyways make sure you're on fms1 which is the first option and we'll click on active make sure you're in in it that'll bring you to the initialization page now if you want to do it the easy way which is what i recommend and import your simbri flight plan you can click on company flight plan request right here it'll do upload uplink insert in progress once that's done it'll then say received company flight plan you can then click on that and click insert cost index is going to be one to one all right, next we'll click on IRS, and you can see here that our IRS is actually aligned. If it wasn't aligned, it would actually tell us how long until the alignment is done here on the right of that table. We'll click on return, we'll go, then go to departure, and then obviously you need to look at your flight plan for what you need. But for us, we'll click on runway, excuse me, runway 10 for departure, and then we'll click on SID, which is our standard instrument departure, and click on piano J, 
with no transition we'll click on temporary flight plan at the bottom right that's good to go insert temporary flight plan we can hit the double arrow arrows to scroll down we could also hit destination on the right to scroll to the bottom of our flight plan what we want to do now is want to insert our arrival and approach uh in our flight plan so we'll click on our ksi here or here either way it works so we'll click on our ksi here we'll go straight to approach and the approach we're expecting right now is three four right so we'll click on that scroll wheel and drag down it's all touch screen and then we'll click on ILS 34 right That's what we're expecting and then that automatically puts our runway in we'll then go over to the star the standard terminal arrival and we'll be looking for almond so we'll scroll down there's almond to echo click on that no transition we do have a via though the via will be in pull click on that that's good to go and we'll go ahead and hit temporary flight plan and insert that now let's do our weight and balance here so we go to active drop down and we'll go to fuel and load click on that and this is what we're going to put in our zero fuel weight so where we get these information from is back on our efb on that page that i was mentioning this one right here so our zero fuel weight is going to be this number right here three four zero zero four seven so we're going to round that to three four zero point one after that third digit i'm going to round up by the way and then right here we'll put three four zero point one now i am in kilograms so if you're in pounds just you know adjust accordingly we also need the cg which is this bottom row 35.3 again we are rounding up so right here we'll click on 35.3 and enter and then our block fuel will go to our fuel page it shows 35 1 so again let's be 35 decimal 1 for 35,100 we'll then go here to our block fuel 35.1 and enter you can also get this number from right here 35 one but it depends on how long you've been sitting on the ground sometimes this number will actually uh go down as your apu is on now we have 385 passengers so we can type that in and enter and that's all we need to do on this page click back on the active drop down and then go to perf and we'll do our performance for this i'm going to slide over to the simbrief.com website uh to actually calculate our v speeds and takeoff data it's very easy to do after you've generated your flight plan you'll be on this screen and on the very top of this screen you can go to takeoff performance you can go here or you can do it on the left side where it says performance tools it's in both locations they do the same thing click on takeoff performance that'll take us to our performance page now in the a380 our ground weight is 375,100 kilograms so in SimBrief, all I need to change here is my takeoff weight to 375100. That'll make all this much more accurate. But we'll go down and hit populate weather. It is actually slightly raining, so it is a wet surface condition. And we'll hit calculate. And now what we need is these options right here. So for V1, as I said, 129, 129, and 148. You can leave it in toga or you can do flex at 30. Eight and enter now for THS we can actually grab that from right over here it's gonna be ground weight CG 36.4 so we'll put that right here click there 36.4 and enter and then lastly what I do is I go to my climb page and I'll just put a pre-selected speed of 250 knots so that way when we put our throttle back into uh, thrust lever climb that'll be the pre-selected speed it'll fly and while we're down here, we're going to click on FMS here at the top of your screen and go down to serve. Once you click on that, that'll bring you to your transponder page. And this is where you can actually set your squat code. Once you get your ATC clearance, so put 2116. And we'll set that to auto. And once, you know, it's appropriate, you can set this to TARA once you're moving the aircraft. And you're good to go there. Now back up here to the top, we'll go make sure our flight director is on and the green light is lit. We'll set our Q&H which you can get from the weather briefing, which for me is showing as 1019. And as you saw there, you can switch between both of those there. I'll go ahead and set my altitude for my cruise of 39,000 feet, but you can set this to whatever ATC clears you up to on initial climb. And then you can go over here and do the up arrow click to make sure you have the dashes between speed and heading. And another cool thing about this aircraft is the actual map. If you take your map here and you just scroll it back to zoom, you look down at the screen here, you'll then have this map here. Now this map will only work if you have your uh, FlyBoR A380 linked to Navigraph. If you do not have Navigraph, this map will not work. But if you do, 
It is touchscreen. You can move it around. It's pretty darn cool. So let's set up our radios. And the way you operate this is once you're in the VHF section here, you can just type in the numbers you want. So one, two, three, four, five, zero. And then it's in big letters. Once you click on the actual button, makes it in small letters. And now it's in a queue to be moved over to the main frequency, just like that. And to be able to actually hear over that frequency, you can click on the call button. Make sure that this is also lit. And you have the green bar here. You can also change your squat code in here as well. All you gotta do is click on the numbers and then you let go and then it places it in there. And with that, we are ready for pushback. So let's go up to the top. I wanna get our external power disconnected. And you can do this in any order. You just go one, two, three, four, and then we'll go over to our EFB, make sure all of our doors are indeed shut. So we'll go to the ground services, go to services, we'll get that door shut there, get that door shut there, and get the ground power unit disconnected as well. Let's now go back up top and get our beacon light on to signal people around us that we are ready for movement. So we'll call for pushback, and you can do pushback however you please. And once the tug is connected, we'll release our parking brake. Commencing push. All engines clear. Start at will. All right, we will do exactly that. So the ignition switch is at the top, unlike the other Airbuses. So we'll put our ignition starter into the ignition start position. And then you can start both engines one and two at the same time. Tow truck disconnected. Bypass been removed. And once you get a good start, that engine will say avail and you can start up engine three and four. Nice. After a good engine start on all four engines, you can now go back to the overhead and set your ignition switch back to normal. We'll also get our APU bleed off and our APU master switch off as well. Let's go back down to the bottom now and get our spoilers armed by pulling them up. And we'll set our flaps by putting them into takeoff position, which is one for us. Now we'll set our auto brakes to disarm and press on the RTO button for eject takeoff. Back to the center, we'll make sure our rudder trim is zeroed out. And we'll set our pitch trim, which is right here. So you can click up and down. And as you can see, I set my pitch trim to the THS setting that we had in our performance data earlier. So 36.4. All right, Ecamm looks good. And we'll now do our flight control check. And that's it, we're ready for taxi. Back to the top, we'll get our taxi lights on, runway turn off lights on for a nighttime taxi, and brakes off. Now that we're moving, we'll set our takeoff config test, which is right here next to our transponder, so TO config. And if you followed everything that I showed you, you should have all green and no blue showing takeoff config normal. You are ready for takeoff for the most part. All right, we're approaching runway 10 here in Taiwan, and we're going to get our landing lights turned on. Landing lights on. There we go. Wing lights on, strobe lights on, and cabin is ready. Let's go ahead and line up. All right, we're lined up pretty decently here. We can also see the runway down there on our mini screen. And basically, if you're doing a flex takeoff, you can throw the throttle straight in the flex. Doing toga, do the same for toga. So throttle forward into flex, throttle set. You can see flex is now set 38. And we are power set and airspeed is alive. A little bit of down nose wheel pressure. And V1, rotate. You're up. All right, flaps up.
pitching for 15 degrees. Following the flight director. All right, lever climb. We'll bring our throttle back to lever climb detent. As you can see, there's that auto selected speed, 250. And autopilot one on. 2,500. And up click speed for managed speed. All right, we're set. Throttle climb is set. Climb is set. And speed set to 250 knots. We are following the flight plan. We are airborne. Hopefully, this tutorial was helpful to you. And I hope you enjoy flying the A380. And I'll see you in the skies, guys. Thanks for watching. Remember, you have three choices. Give up, give in, and give it all you got. Peace, love, and God bless you. I'll see you guys next time, next video. Good luck.